Glad you could join us this time out. We are joined, as always, by Greg Angert, beer director for the Neighborhood Restaurant Group, a food and wine sommelier of the year, the group including Vermilion in Old Town, Tallulah in Arlington. Greg, good to see you. Yeah. What's on tap this week? Well, this week we have a, uh, a beer that most craft beer lovers are familiar with, at least those that are hop heads. Um, but it's something that is just now finally getting to us with uh, any regularity in D.C. It's the Sculpin IPA, probably one of my top five IPAs in the U.S., um, from Ballast Point, uh, brewing down in San Diego, California. Uh, interesting here is that this beer has actually been available in Northern Virginia for about nine months now. So it's, I, always, I always love it when, uh, you know, most people think, oh, D.C. gets stuff that beer-wise that Northern Virginia does it, and while that's true, a lot of the times, there are, I think we've talked about before, every now and then, some beers like Main, uh, well, not Main Beer Company, but um, like Mission Brewing Company, right. that you can get uh, in Northern Virginia, sometimes instead of D.C., but oftentimes before they come to D.C. So now we're, we're glad to have Sculpin finally here, and, uh, and it's just a, a fantastic American IPA. Great story behind this. So uh, 1992 is when um, uh, Ballast Point started Sort of, because at that time, a guy named Jack White, who's the owner of Ballast Point, opened a, a homebrew shop called Homebrew Mart in San Diego because he could not get his hands on the supplies and ingredients that he needed as a homebrewer to concoct his, his homebrew uh, beer. And so he figured, might as well just do it myself. Kind of similar to what Larry Bell did in Kalamazoo, Michigan, um, and that eventually transformed into Bell's Brewery today. And interesting that both of those storylines led to two of the best IPAs in the world, the Two Hearted and the Sculpin in this case. Um, and what's even cooler about this beer in, in relation to that story is that one of the homebrew recipes um, kind of coming out of that homebrew shop, I suppose, uh, was called North Star IPA. And that is literally the recipe upon which Sculpin IPA is based. So this is a, a brewery that has its uh, origins in a homebrew shop and their most well-known beer and an amazing delicious IPA also has its origins in a homebrew recipe and I think at some point uh, we're, we're going to bring a, a cool link up because I was actually able to find online the original kind of homebrew recipe okay. upon which um, this beer is based so you homebrewers out there can try your hand at making Sculpin and now that it's so available in DC as well as Northern Virginia you can compare and contrast your version to this one. We'll put the link up right down here and leave it up for a few seconds if you want to uh, pause the video uh, and write it down. Just yeah. make sure you finish watching the video. Totally. Shall we? Yes. Cool. Ooh, mama. <laughs> Great nose. Yep. Oh, hello, hops. This is um, one of the, um, you know, this is uh, has the quintessential kind of bright fruit um, bouquet that uh, you see in, in certain IPAs. Some IPAs are more piney, resinous, maybe darker, like grapefruit um, qualities are more tropically fruity, I guess. But this one has just big, huge lemon, apricot, mango, peach yeah. qualities to it, which makes it stand out. And maybe w since you mentioned lemon, and I say this in only the best of ways, is that I get a taste rem reminiscent of tea yeah, a yeah. little bit. There's like and a lemon tea quality to it. It's delicious. Lemon heads as well. That has a candy quality to it. Nice and dry, but not overly bitter. Um, I think it hovers around 7% alcohol as well. He knows what I'm looking for. Yeah. yeah. Um, but just a, a really uh, a great IPA. You know, it's like wow. uh, one of those ones, like I said, I, I mentioned, Two Hearted. You know, you have pure hoppiness from, from Alpine. Uh, Ithaca Flower Power is an amazing hoppy beer. I mean, there's obviously the Russian River. Pliny's, Pliny's are... Phenomenal, surly, I could go on and on, uh, making great hoppy beers, but I really do count Sculpin in that kind of class of the, just the, the, the flat out best hoppy beers around. San Diego, mm -hmm. Mission San Diego, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Stone. Stone. San Diego. Uh, yeah, Escondido, so okay. just right outside. What are they putting in the water in uh, San Diego? It's crazy. I mean, they've got some it's great crazy. There's, beer there's, so there's great you know, craft uh, you got stone. out there. In that area, there's Stone, there's Mission, there's Green Flash, Green. Uh, Ale Smith, uh, Ballast Point, um, and then uh, you know Lost Abbey is nearby, and you've got uh, even I, uh, one of my managers was just out there actually, and he found it was actually San Diego Beer Week when he was out there. He found a tiny little nano brewery. I think it's called Hess 
H-E-S-S. It brought me back a bottle I haven't tasted yet, but apparently they're just getting rave reviews as well. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I can think of worse places to go on vacation than San Diego where it's perennially nice out and the paradise of, of craft beer. I think well. I can think of worse worst places to live. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, that's that's like even better. Something right? average of like 78 degrees all year, yeah, all it's year insane, round. Yeah. And, uh, and then just great beers. I mean, and especially if you love hoppy beers. I mean, they just got it. You've got it down out there. It's phenomenal. What would you pair this with? It's it's hoppy. It's so hoppy. It's not overly bitter, but I mean, tough challenge. It's tough. Though. Yeah, I guess. Uh, uh, well, I will say, like, I'm trying to. When we talk about pairing now, I'm just kind of thinking about things I've had recently yeah. that I think are really cool and being a little bit more specific for you. So, um, I just tasted uh, a cheese that I've had before, but I absolutely love it, and I think it is it is unbelievable with IPAs in general, um, and it's from. Roth Keza, which is a, um, a cheese maker in Wisconsin. Uh, and the name of this cheese is Sol Gran Queso. Uh, and even better if you can find the Sol Gran Queso Reserve. This, it, it's like, literally it tastes like the perfect blend of cheddar and Parmesan cheese. It's got like the cheddar, kind of mild fruity, almost caram like nutty qualities, and then the rich kind of, um, uh, the, the, the kind of like, almost like sharp, intensity and crystalline form of Parmesan. It's just great. You get the hops to kind of dig into the richness of the cheese, lightens it up, opens it up. Uh, it's phenomenal together. So be specific, being specific, literally try to find some Sol Gran Queso, uh, reserve if you can, get some Sculpin, uh, and just, they just they, it's a match made in heaven. It's delicious. Um, a week or two ago, we were talking about the founder of Evil Twin Brewing in the bottle shop. Yep. That uh, fantastic bottle shop that he opened uh, Copenhagen, yeah. in Copenhagen years ago. There are a lot of great, and you've got your group has Planet Wine over in Delray, which sells yeah, wine absolutely. and beer. And beer, we have great beers. And there are a lot of other good places in town where you can find a lot of great beers. But to me, there's not really just one sole bottle shop. And in Washington State, where I'm from, the bottle shops also have 15, 20 beers on tap that you can take away in a growler. Now, yeah. that you can't do that in the district. And the reason I'm bringing all of this up is to ask, do you think that ever will be the case in the district? I think, well, you know, I... Uh, or, or Virginia or Maryland. Well, in Virginia, but. you can technically get a dual license, um, like Lost Dog Cafe. And actually, Rusticos, we do take out um, bottled beers, not so much growlers or things right. like that. But now, if you go to the Whole Foods, any number of Whole Foods, they fill growlers to go, um, in Virginia, that is. Okay. D.C. seems Didn't like pretty, pretty strict um, uh, single license, no dual license. So it's either on or off-premise. And so I don't think they're going to see a lot of those one-stop shops. New York City right now is booming with these bottle growler shop coom bars. It like, seems like that's the next big thing. Is like, so you have a selection of bottles you could buy and drink in or take with you. It's kind of a dual thing. Seeing it all over New York, you know, Washington State has it as well. Uh, I'm pretty sure Oregon does. Uh, I don't think it's going to happen in D.C. as much. And, uh, you know, and, and part of that's also business because it's, you know, retail is a very small margin um, pursuit. And rents are pretty, pretty high in D.C. So I think that's one of the reasons why we haven't seen that kind of ultimate bottle shop like we've seen some ultimate beer bars and things like that. So we're getting into the holiday season. Will we be uh, maybe trying some holiday beers coming up? Or? If, you, if you'd like. We can, <laughs> <laughs> sure, of course. Or maybe absolutely. one or two. Yeah, I think, the, I think in our next couple ones we're going to do uh, some great holiday beers for you all to uh, enjoy um, over the holidays. All right. If you've got a question for Greg, the email is... Beer of the week at WTOP.com. We'd love to hear you, uh, hear, hear from you, and hear your question. Greg will do his best to answer it uh, as we get closer to the end of 2012. Greg, thank you as always. We Pleasure. appreciate it. Everyone, please always do drink responsibly, and be sure to bring your thirst next time for another beer of the week.